Hi everyone! Today we're going to uh, use what we've learned in uh, this week's course material with variables and logic and if statements and see if we can't go through some of it together. So what I want you to first do is go into Replit and either create a new one or click on an old one so that you have this window with JavaScript running. So let's see that it is running. Very slowly, but yes, it, it seems to be running. Okay, so what have we learned this week? We've learned what a variable is. So this here is a variable. The variable's value is five. The variable's name is age. And what type is it? Well, sometimes in programming, it's useful to know what the type of it is. So people have created a function, which we'll be talking about next week, that looks as following. Type up. So it says console.log type of age. If we run this, we see that it's number. So if you write something like this, you will see what the type, the data type, of the variable we put in here is. So let us try with another one. Remember, if we're going to do text, we need to have it in quotation marks. And this is to differentiate for the code between text that we say this is text and variables. Let's see here. That is a string. So this here is called a string. Now, what would happen if I would do this? It would tell me that it's a string. What if I did this? It's a number. So what the computer does is it swaps out what is, insi what is inside of this variable here. So you could just as well just type this out right there and it would have the same result. However, if we wanted to just type in this, the computer doesn't un understand this at all. The reason is that it's not in quotation marks. There is a space in between he here and this is not a variable that's been created or declared anywhere. And it's not something that the code has hidden inside of itself within replit, within the environment. So the computer gives us an error. Now, if we do this, we create a variable, but we don't give it a value. get undefined because it, it exists, it's stored in memory, but it doesn't have any definition other than that. There we go. And if you would Google uh, this, you would probably find a lot of different types of variables. Now, next week, we're going to uh, talk about something called arrays, and I'm going to show you what it is and explain a little bit fast so you get a sneak peek. But if you want to, you can Google it. Next week, we'll go through it a little bit more. So an array is essentially a list. We name this list list. Let's name it grocery list so it's not so general. And this is how you type a list. So we're going to buy apples, we're going to buy, what else do you buy? Milk, people buy milk, uh, people buy eggs, coffee, very important. Now these are all in here of the data type string, but I have not created any quotation marks here around these. So if I were to just type it in here, we might get an error. Because this 
is not defined. What the computer is telling me is that they're interpreting this as a variable. Now it's an object. Let's do Now we're going to swap out this specific variable at the end here. And we're going to sub out this for that. You're going to see that the computer is going to type out Arabica. So variables themselves are never printed out in that way. What is printed out is what's stored inside, the value of it. So, so we're going to continue with some if statements, and I'm going to show you how to write these. So first we type out if, parentheses, and these squiggly parentheses, like so. Inside of this parentheses, we're going to type in what we're checking, so the condition. So we're going to write if age equals five, then we're going to console dot log out h. So you might be wondering why is there one equal sign here and three equal signs down here? Well, the reason is that when we type it like this, we're telling the computer that here we have a new variable and that variable's uh, value is going to be five. Here we are comparing it to something else. In JavaScript, we write the comparison with the three of these equal signs. In Java, we write uh, two equal signs. So as such. Now let's see what we get. First, the computer did this, did this code that we can see right here. We got apples, milk, eggs, and Arabica. Then it moved on to the if statement, and it's, we said, if age is 5, then console log age. Now what happens if I ask it to say that, check if age is 7? Nothing more comes out. So let's try something else. If type of age is number. console log out type of age. And we got number. So here's how you can check very many different things. The most important thing is that they're written in the correct way. So if we would have written number as such, the computer wouldn't have understood it, I think. Number is not defined. So what it's doing here is it's, it's trying to check if there is a variable named number and seeing if type of age is equivalent to that pretend variable. The computer's type of what we get out they've written it inside quotation marks, they've written it as a string, so therefore we also need it to be a string in order for them to match completely. Now let's write over a variable. So if type of age is number, which we know that it is, we're going to set a new age. We do that by typing up the uh, age, the name of the variable. So remember, the whole let is just when we create it. Now we're using it. So we're going to reset it to eight, and then we're going to console log out h. So let's see what we get. Eight. So this is the same variable. I created it here, then I reuse it there, there, and there. So there's a name that I keep on getting at. 
there is a value that I have changed, and there is a data type, which is number. All variables follow this pattern. Now, if we're going to try it out with strings, we once again have to be exact when we compare things. So if name equals including where the spaces are. Everything needs to be exact. And here we can type some new string. Let's do this. Oh my gosh, sorry. Now, what the computer has done, it's taken this string, this text, I'm going to refer to it as a string from now on, and it's created a new string using this first bit and getting the value of name. So we could even write So let's try one more time. If occupation equals student, I'm going to also change this. Oops. I'm also going to change this into something a bit more age appropriate. So let's say 21. If occupation is student, console log hello name. Let's make this big. Then you need a plus again, and that is how the computer knows to combine, or a computery terms, programmy terms, concatenate uh, into a new string. So hello, uh, actually, let's Oh, whoops, 21 I said. Oh, see, sometimes you make these mistakes. I reset the value down here, so I don't need to set it uh, differently there. So. There we go. Let's see what this turns out. So I'm invoking one variable here, another here that's been changed. I'm checking if occupation is student over here. Let's see what we get from this. Oops, what did I write wrong? Ah, you see, it's very helpful because the computer tells you what's wrong over here. What did I do? I forgot to put these quotation marks on either side of the exclam exclamation point. Hello, Ellen Mu. Of course, I misspelled that. Nice to meet you. How old are you? I am 21. So pause this, take a look at it, play around with it. Um, this should be everything you need to be able to pass the examination. Um, this is simply the starting point. So uh, play around with this, see if you can understand and follow along and create your own variables, create your own um, overriding of variables, if statements, etc. Um, good luck and have fun!